And if you check the creationists or the evolutionists, the two of them will tell you that life start in Africa. The only difference is that the evolutionists will tell you that the oldest fossil of any human being was found in Ethiopia and it is the woman. The evolution, the creationists will tell you, say, the woman come from a man ribs. Yes. The evolution will tell you, say, the evolution will tell you, say, the earth is millions of years old. The creation is to tell you say, it is 6,000 years old. Now that me can't take. When a man tell me, say, the Bible says 6,000, therefore 6,000. I mean, with all the evidence in front time, with all the, the reality we're, we're in front time, him insists I tell you, say, the earth is 6,000 years old. Crazy, craziness. <laughs> then some man come tell you, say, when the Bible says God made the earth in a six days, him tell you, say, well, Muta, you have to understand, you know, that one day, it's like a thousand years to the Lord, but it's foolishness that because the Bible specifically said the evening and the morning was the first day. That cannot be six thousand. That cannot be a thousand years. This thing are never making another six day, and that is old time thinking from people who don't want to take new information in them. If you really believe, say this earth is six thousand years old, and that. Everything making a six days. Something wrong with your brains. May I tell you? Something really wrong with your brains. If you really believe that everything where they are so making a six day. <laughs> Trust me. I think the biggest news to I personally is this new skeleton that was found in Ethiopia. They are always fine. Hey, there's no doubt. There is no doubt. Oh, yeah, look at me, someone. A new skeleton. <laughs> yeah. It's a new skeleton because they've just find it. It new. It new to the world where they find before, which was Lucy. A Denkenesh. A Denkenesh is the name them give to that skeleton that them found and say it was 3.5 million years old. Well, this one them say it gone a million years older. So, it's a serious thing because, you know, people here, we are talking all the while, you know, and I say, Ethiopia, 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 and people are saying, look, Rasta thing, Rasta thing. But guess what? Original man. Original man. The place where them call Ethiopia right now, a deso, it start. Human species, civilization, evolve through time and space through that little place where them call Ethiopia. So it is no wonder. It is no wonder that I and I could come right now and look to Ethiopia for our salvation. Yes, it is no wonder. Our salvation did have to come through the oldest point of reference. No one can say nothing about that. And we don't have to legitimize that through no Bible because the Bible is not old. I just the idea the Bible come out. We are talking about ancient, ancient civilization. Millions of years old. It is no accident why Rasta come now and say Ethiopia. Because Ethiopia have so much of the history of human species. That if we look inside at that and say, our salvation belongs to Ethiopia and come from Ethiopia and emanate from Ethiopia. Who is these people who come tell us different? The story of humankind is reaching back another million years with the discovery of Adi, A-R-D-I, a humanid who lived 4.4 million years ago in what is now Ethiopia. The 110 pound 4 foot female roamed forests a million years before the famous Lucy, long studied as the earliest skeleton of a human ancestor. Now, the older skeleton reverses the common wisdom of human evolution said anthropologist C. Owen Lovejoy of Kent State University. 
rather than humans evolving from an ancient chimp-like creature, the new find provides evidence that chimps and humans evolved from some long ago common ancestor, but each evolved and changed separately along the way. This is not the common ancestor. This is not that common ancestor, but it's the closest we have ever been able to come, said Tim White, director of the Human Evolution Research Center at the University of California, Berkeley. The lives that evolved into modern humans and living apes probably shared an ancestor six million to seven million years ago, White said in a telephone interview. But are they as many traits that do not appear in modern day African apes, leading to the conclusion that the apes evolved extensively since we shared that last common ancestor. A study of Ade underway, underway since the first bones were discovered in 1994 indicates the species lived in the woodlands and could climb on all fours along tree branches but the development of their arms and legs indicates they didn't spend much time in the trees and they could walk upright on two legs when on the ground formerly dubbed adipitivcus tamidus which means root of the ground ape the find is detailed in 11 research papers published thursday by the journal science this is one of the most important discoveries for the study of human evolution, said David Pilbeam, curator of Philanthropology at Avad Peabody Museum of Archaeology and Ethnology. It is relatively complete in that it preserves head, hands, feet, and some critical parts in between. It represents a genius plausible ancestral to Australopithecus itself ancestral to our genius Omo said Phil Bean who was not part of the research teams scientists, scientists assembled the skeleton from 125 pieces and the article goes on and on and I'm sure you are a dry near of what they found the arms is very long, may I tell you. Long, long arms. But, yes, they are found right there in Ethiopia. Right there in Ethiopia. This, the same place, geographical location where they found Lucy. So, if them go and look and look, if the scientists are evolutionists, then the creationists might search for the first man there and who them perceive are perceived to be God. Yes, I am putting it this way. Maybe I should get a PhD for this now. <laughs> because if the scientist them who is evolutionist, can you have two train of thought, you have the evolutionist and the creationist. There's a school of thought where the creationists believe that there's some entity out there that created the first one. And he's called Adam. And there's the other school of thought, scientifically, that man evolved from apes. According to a Charles Darwin theory that has been scientifically proven that man actually evolved from these apes through the discovery of these bones and parts so my reason is this that if the creation story in the bible when it says eden the garden of eden and it shows you geographically where the garden of eden was in the bible and it mentioned the same land ethiopia and the evolutionist theory scientifically says that they find the first human being in the same location, Ethiopia. Then the probability should arise 
that we should also look in Ethiopia for the creator of this human species. <laughs> Aye, sir. What am I suggesting here? I am suggesting that Ethiopia is the answer to not only to the, not only to the creationists, but to the evolutionists. That is what I am suggesting. I am suggesting that if we be practical and true to ourselves, we would look for our beginning through Ethiopia and Marcus Garvey though not being a man who cared very much for the idea that Rasta project did say that we should look to God through our own spectacle through the eyes of Ethiopia. Marcus Garvey said that in the philosophy and opinions of Marcus Garvey. He said, if the white man choose to worship God through his spectacle, let him do it. If the Jews worship God through the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, let do him do it. But we, though let it might be, should worship God through Ethiopia. Now, some people might say that when him say Ethiopia, he wasn't talking about that specific part of the land. But we know that Marcus Garvey hardly declare the whole of Africa as Ethiopia because he mentioned Africa as Africa. But on this specific occasion, he mentioned Ethiopia. And I am saying that Ethiopia to the evolutionists is the birthplace of the human species. And to the creationists, it is the birthplace of the human species. So why is it implausible to look for, if you are a creationist thinker, why is it not the possibility that the creator of this creation is not residing in the belly of Ethiopia. And though a lot of people might claim that the Rasta man don't know where he say and don't have no sense because he might look for one man and I declare him God. I, non-apologetically, I say it is better to search in the bowels of Ethiopia through your ancestral legacy and define yourself through Eilis Selassie than to imagine vain things about a concept that was given to us by insecure men. Yes. And it's not ordinary for a man come to clear Eilis Selassie because when you look on the idea that Rasta man declare it much bigger than all Rasta to much bigger and it it, it it just it just amaze I all people just shun it as some stupid concept instead of them looking pan instead of them look upon the the fullness of it and the realization of it but because it has come from a set of people who them claim say no, I have no theological background. I am not educated enough for these cipher concepts and ideas. The more I say, we don't have no sense. But the plausibility is there through evolution and through creation story. The plausibility is there. There is a fullness in what the Rasta man is saying about Eilis Lassie and about Ethiopia. There is a fullness. There is a higher level of perception that is not grasped by the normal, everyday person who are thinking about Savior and Jesus and God and all them things there. Serious thing. I mean, I'm bridging a talk a while ago about the magnitude of the Rasta idea 
and not Rasta not Grasp. really grasping the magnitude of the idea. You know, see, because because we're coming from a Christian society, most Rasta choose to validate this idea through a biblical perspective. But if you could have just step out of that biblical perspective a moment and realize that what Rasta is saying is 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 is, is like momentous i mean if there's such a word is it like large and i don't i don't really think most rasta understand the magnitude of this concept this idea that rasta project upon the world by saying eyeless lassie i don't think i will if a rasta understand it i don't think i will if a rasta understand that saying eyeless lassie is not just linking a man with a Solomonic dynasty, linking a man with biblical perspectives, but realizing that it gone, it's like a giant, it's like a, it's like something, you ever see a cloud, like, like, like somebody just kick up dust, and it just, Puss out. It just, it just, it just, it just. May I tell you? It, 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 it. it I mean. That's what they would call a snowball effect. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Snowball around yeah, around running. Just bigger, bigger and bigger and bigger. Can it get up snow? Yeah. Can when you look on these, when you, when, when you look on these um, archaeologists, archaeological findings, and the, the all right. First of all. Me have some people are reason just this weekend yeah, in a Cincinnati. Where they are Cincinnati and they are reason for a radio program in a Cincinnati. Why you look the people them in a Cincinnati? Why you? And, and we are say all right. The evolution show you non apologetically that the world, the earth, cannot be six thousand year old. It is ridiculous. I mean, not even the most sensible. Not even the most ignorant Christian theologian. No, only dark Christian would I tell you that. No. Still. Yeah, after all of this. Yeah, still. Yeah, if you tell you, say, the earth is 6,000 years old. No. You know, see, I don't even know. I, I, you know, what? I, 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 I forgot to interview Ian Boy. Yes, one. because look at now. The Bible say the earth is 6,000 years old. You know, man is 6,000 years old. In I'm farm, I'm still here, so no. It means 6,000 years old. That means, according to the Bible, before Adam, there was no man. That is what the Bible is saying. Before Adam, there was no man. So, when the Bible tells you, say, man in his the state to him is now, when he was created, it's so him did stay. That is what it is saying. And 6,000 years after, him stay the same way. The same look, the same design is just so. God make man. And just how we look now is so God did make man. And 6,000 years of man is where we have for earth. No, believe you me, man. Geologically, archaeologically, anthropologically, there is no way a man in a right sense could have really believed, say, where up on earth here yeah, so no the birds the bees the flowers and the trees is just six thousand year old <laughs> no way him have to be the most stupid and most no irrational mind the, the same mm. man we believe that you know believe say you'd have dinosaurs live 10 million years ago but all can believe that if if, if dinosaurs did have lived before prehistory them kind of prehistoric him, him man. No reason it <laughs> You know, it's a weird thing. Him just said, yeah, him said, they have dinosaur. Yeah. Then if they have dinosaur, and the dinosaur was like, I mean, me go at Jericho Rasta. The same wall, the same place. Where them say, round the wall of Jericho, the army went. Seven times the people shout and the wall fall down. Ah, I went to the spot where that wall was. And on entering the city of Jericho. The, and I said this many times on this program, I know. 
I sound like a parrot now, but I keep repeating the same thing. When we went to this city, when we are just about to enter the city, there is a sign there that says, Welcome to Jericho, the oldest city on earth, 10,000 year old. That is what the sign say. Welcome to Jericho, the oldest city on earth, 10,000 years old. No. That is 4,000 more than the Bible man, you know. They have to be man creating cities. And this, these people claim that Jericho is 10,000 years old. If you go to Egypt, and look on buildings and structures and human art farms and artwork. It is more than 10,000 years old. You must have man there. For me, eh? yeah, you must have man there to build these things, you know. Therefore, what we are saying non-apologetically, Rasta come in a in so-called ignorance and in i'm so-called um poverty stricken position in this farmer slave plantation island you saw and say emperor Ailis Lassie is the almighty and him say ethiopia at the original for him original place and people scoff at him shun him i mean do all manner of things with him without looking into the idea because the idea don't originate with the man who ball it out yeah, so you know it's, a, it's, it's thousands of years the idea linger in the wind you know it just come grab some people in a, this part of the world yeah but it's thousands of years the idea they are linking a, a, a linger in the wind so a man nobody make it come like say it's a joke thing because see there, the creationists and the evolutionists are declare Ethiopia. So, if we never go dig up no soil, somehow we never ever take no plane yet. Most rats never take a plane that left Jamaica. The elder them, when they come up with the idea, never know Ethiopia, but them declare it. We have to really take a stock. All the, all the little people, them who are look for Rasta like Rasta, you know, some like ganja smoking, fool, fool, set of people, them. We are linked the whole thing through what we call our spirituality, through our experience, not through learning in a book, not through calling nobody, just through the experience and the learning. We gone past Bible. Gone past Christian thinking, Judaism, Islam, all of these things, them with them set up as as religion for the people them. Rastafari penetrate all of them and gone way in at the first original geographical location. Go find for him redeemer. A serious thing. Well, but people scared for your the radio. You know, them scared for your uh, radio announcer say these things. Them scared, them frightened for your say we have certain views. We just almost sound we out. <laughs> we always that smile because people you know, investigate certain things. So they just get scared and nervous when certain things not connect with where them did that thing. Do you understand? Uh, last week we asked a question. We asked a question and then the next a call at the man. So he's the incarnation of the day, but yet them still never answer the question. And we can ask many more questions all the week and I'm frightening more too. <laughs> Sometimes we say certain things and we have to go dig deep. Because we don't want to say something and then make the thing go ear wire. And we look at certain things seriously too. You know, see, like what the question we asked last week, I don't know you nobody come answer away. And we say we ask questions that children ask that little children ask them don't understand you know like, how I, I, like there's a little advertisement where they're on the tv where 
the little youth stand up in front of this pregnant woman and him say what, what, what what's that and and she say well it's a little baby him say so how it reach there <laughs> that's a little baby child question it was a very important question how did it reach there because I hear the problem with that now. Most big people afraid to come tell you exactly how it reached there. You understand? So them, it's because them don't want to tell you exactly about sex. Them start telling something like madness about it. Start bring it there and this and that. And it 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 it, 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 it make the illusion become so prominent that the youth now grow up with this tendency about sex. Because he never, he wasn't told about this thing. How did the child come? It come through the union between a man and a woman and bring that. No, they're afraid to talk that. So they tell the picnic some little craziness. And over the years, we see the craziness gone into some perversion. <laughs> yes. Perverted thinking and perverted mind. We see the thing gone in because you never tell the youth originally what is what and what is not. You know, see it. So when we come down and say, but, oh, yeah, tell the thing so over the years. So, 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 uh, we are sure this is so, this way, you know. Look at it that way, yeah. But some people fear to look at it the next way because it's you know, in, in line with how they were taught the thing. This is how you're supposed to de- think. Them have you in a little straight jacket. You're supposed to think this way. And if you're not think that way, yeah, idiot. I don't have no sense. So if you ask a question, like last week when me asked a question, I say, how is it that Moses is supposed to write the five books of the Bible? Yet still Moses is talking in third person. I want somebody to ask answer me that. There's no way I'm going to write something. <coughs> my my autobiography. And write myself in there as a third person, like I was not experiencing it. That is a valid question to a child. And as I said before, I ask a question when children ask. Because I realize that when children ask question, if they get the right answer, it work out a certain way in their consciousness. Because it make them know Go search deeper. If them get the wrong answer, then become like zombies and puppets. And then when them grow big now, it's a rebellion. Because them come say, but look how them that tell me lie. Like me, yes or no. A pure lie, then they tell me. Them still a tell me lie. And we come find out, say, a lie, them a tell me. Because when we did a little picture, them and know, say, a lie, them a tell because even the people them will tell a lie, don't know say a lie they might tell. That is how deep the thing is. Cause this liar come from centuries, centuries, centuries of liars, and them keep the lie floating by showing you more things that may attract you, attract your your your, your, your subliminal thoughts. And then put the thing inside of it and put the lies, 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 and the lies them. Look like truth. So when you hear the truth, the truth sound like the lie. Most of the things then what we know is lie. Most of the things then that we come to believe is lie. And we are talking about like millions of things, millions of things, whether political, social, sexual religiously, I mean religion, most of the things them that we hold fast to as truth is lie. It come from a group of people that is there to manipulate history, manipulate culture, manipulate social order, manipulate political order, manipulate sexual order, manipulate God thinking, manipulate spirituality and religion, and give us what them want to give us. Make them feel say what them make we feel say what them are say is the truth. And if we go circumvent it, 
is either we're going to get ton madman or our own people shun way, disregard way, and say, boy, right now, you have foolishness in my talk. Where get them foolishness there from? And guess what? The man, he done tell you the foolishness already. He done tell you foolishness already. You have the foolishness in your head. For years, hundreds of years, thousands of years, you have the foolishness in your head. And you know, it's a foolishness because you know what? God knows nothing else more than we him tell you. So when you hear a man come down and tell you, say, but when I want to two, you know, and two and two are four, and I keep going on and on and on and on and about all on, all on, but you have something well lower than all zero, you know. Come on and tell you, say, boy, a man feed 5,000 people with four fish and 12 barley loaves. And you say, how is that possible? And say, well, watch you now. It's supernatural thing that, you know, that is thing where, you can't have a question that that is beyond your comprehension. I said, but wait, or the beyond my comprehension, what is it? What's the purpose of it? Why am I showing something that do have no significance and relevance to the reality of my life? Why am I being told that a man feed 5,000 people with four fish and 12 valuables or whatsoever I'm feeding them with? Why am I being told that in my life? Why should I now accept that as a real situation? Because if the man, he come to me and show me, say, look here, this is a metaphor for something. This is a figurative, figuratively speaking. I'm trying to show you something mythologically. And the myth is dear to make you grasp a certain understanding that is in the human comprehension. But I'm using flavors and different things to make you more understandable of what I am trying to say. But them don't do it that way. Them say, this is history. This is a real thing. And I saw it go. And if you think something different, you, 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 had, you, had, you had something else other than where you is. And them have matter in them eye and can't receive it. Because the matter is so thick, it closes them eye. So them think without understanding. And them accept without knowing. Because the belief is what them grab with continuously. Them only with a belief system. And them grind it in a way. And pump it in a way. The way we eat, the way we talk, the way we walk, the way we dress, the way we, the way we angle with women, the way we angle with brethren and sisters, the way we angle with cultural experiences that is indigenous to we, the way we look on the world, the way we don't look on the world, the way we always look on things that we don't know about. And accept it as thing that we're supposed to be. It's a terrible thing them have we in a, especially black people, especially black people, black people. The we over there so, and when them supposed to over here so, and when him hear about himself, him deny himself. You ever talk about Peter deny Christ three times? Black people deny themselves 400 times in a 400 years. Black people deny themselves 400 times in a 400 years. And I carry weight on them shoulder. And believe them in a slavery still. So we say the coming up now of America and where America is today. And you hear the man talk about slavery. And them start with history of slavery like this is where it starts. When we know, say, thousands of years before in the Greek or anything like that, there were African people living in institutions, having them laws and all them things there. But the reality, the reality of it is that this is not the time now for say you don't know. Because there's so much information given right now that if you really say you don't know, trust me, 
Trust me. It's a terrible thing right now. At this time, you have to say you don't know. Because them want us to believe that because of them raping and robbing and pilveraging them, the land and the people, and always stay you now at the bottom, is also was all the while. But if we only knew, if we only knew what we knew now, if we didn't only knew it then, it would have been a different aspect of life. And that is where we really want the people them to understand. We want the people them to understand, say, slavery is not African history. Slavery is not African history. And before they came to Africa, your four parents, your four parents have uh, had institutions, scientific, economic, social, political, families. The families were intact. You buy him always use this phrase, it takes a village to raise a child. That's an African proverb. It takes a village to raise a child. We lose all of that. That is why it's we are going here so now. We are going here so now. When we look on it, and then we see them have the wealth. You wonder how them get wealthy. How did America become the wealthiest country on earth? Where did they get their wealth from? Or how did they get their wealth? Michael Moore said, they try to wipe out a whole group of people and then use a next group of, build, group of people as slaves to build the country. What I'm talking about? I'm talking about the so-called Native Americans, them, who the Europeans come to um, America and say, and try to wipe them out under the name of them religion, searching for land from Europe. They did have to run from Europe. Religious persecution brought them into America, so-called. And them tried to wipe out that group of people. And in trying to wipe them out, they brought in a next group of people and enslaved the people them. But we know, we know and we understand that even though America be a go on like say, everything is donkey do. And we had a black president and all these things. We know that so there's an underlying thing that is that is soon will flare up. And then we're going to wonder if it's if it's the great America that or if it's a third world country. Because you know, according to that statistics, America is the worst first world country. I wonder if you hear me say, I know me say, you know, statistics say. That America is the worst first world country. And America has done so much things because the people in America, you know, we see them white, you know, it's Europe, them come from. As we are telling you a while ago, these so called pilgrims who was running from religious persecution in our Europe, in our England, came over and see the Native American, them and try to wipe them out. And then them end up, I try to look independence from England and fight with them call a civil war. And the North and the South move against one another. And then them start now the confederation down at the bottom. And them get the confederate flag. Well, you know, we see the flag come back in light again. And then we see this president, Donald Trump. This president who is very white and is trying to make America white again. America not, never stopped being white. It's just that them cloud it up and cloud up a whole of black people face. And make black people feel say, yeah, things are going halfway. But we know, we know. So the dragon is still alive. A lot of people hear about the liberty and justice of America. Most people recognize America as a free country, very democratic, and is injustice. But black people over the years 
as a collective force, as a collective group, never get no justice in America and still is part of that unjust system. So we continue. That statue of liberty. And when I was going to school, I thought that the Spaniards and the so-called Arawak, as we were taught, told they were called, was having a conversation about land and all these things. But as a little youth, I never ever think in my mind about we the Spaniards never know the language of the Tainos. Now the Tainos know the language of the Spaniards, so they couldn't have a conversation. What transpired was these men have guns and bayonets and the indigenous people of this part of the world had fruits to give. And they were slaughtered because of their look. These Spaniards thought that they would be killed because they were looking like, according to their eyes, savages without the heart of God in them, Jesus Christ. So they came with them guns and them bayonets to civilize a people who was here living according to how people should live in tune with nature having them rituals and them different ideas of society and how society should be and their institutions and christopher columbus in his quest for finding gold he never find none but he carry back some of the natives to Spain and he eventually makes some more voyages and voyages and him end up in a Jamaica, Cuba, all of these little islands yeah, and find himself in it. Lend up on the, the shores of Massachusetts in America. And what transpired is not something that neither the Tainos nor the Native Americans now the Africans who came after would want to record in their history book as something that was wonderful and beautiful and what was a great part of their history. The atrocities that was placed on these people is still embedded in the soil of these land, these captured land. And Christopher Columbus, Christopher Columbus, after all of that, never find a goal. And there was a time when they decided that they're going to send some of these people to look for gold. And anybody who never come home with gold, they would chop off them wrists. Chop off them wrists. Ah, uh, them foot. Don't have them, them, don't have the, the, the foot part there. Eh? Them will chop it off if you don't find a goal. And them still never find a goal. And thousands, if not millions, of Tainos was here when Christopher Columbus came. And when Columbus leave, there was a couple hundred. Christopher Columbus devastated this part of the world. Disease that these people never know was introduced to them in the land. The Tainos were murdered, raped, and all sorts of disease take them over. And when Christopher Columbus leave and went back to Spain, Eventually, Christopher Columbus was arrested and imprisoned. Did we hear that in the history books? Yes, I hear that in my history book. I don't know about your history book. 
Christopher Columbus was imprisoned in Spain. He was not a national hero in Spain. He was not a person that Spaniards were taught in their history book to look up to. He was one of the most cruel and evilest person that ever come across this part of the earth. Christopher Columbus. We want you to remember what them teach you in history class when it come on to this part of the world. Because Christopher Columbus thought that he was in India. And logically because he was traveling west. Obviously it was the west of India. So therefore the people who was on the land, who was not Indians, was called West Indians. No, think about it. The Tainos was here first. Think about it. We come. The English take over the land from the Spaniards. Kill off some Spaniards and take over the land. Capture land again. White people are kill white people for take the land where it's not for them own. Them still are do it. Jamaica was first occupied according to their history. Because we can't even go back farther than that too. Because the Tainos was here. Jamaica was occupied by the Spaniards who come and rape and kill the Tainos. Some white people from, from England kill off some Spaniards where they left here. So when Christopher Columbus gone back to Spain, he left a whole heap of them here so for build up villages and all them something there. The English come and kill them, murder the, 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 them, and murder the other little military Tainos where they are, and capture the land. So, thief from thief. My mother used to say, thief from thief, and God laugh. So, here are some people who thief the land from the, the, the Tainos, and here are some other people come thief the land from them. And them come back, come thief the land from the said people, and the people them come back, come thief the land again. Now imagine this. We don't have to imagine it. Check this. The man make a mistake. How much years ago this happened? 1492? Let me say. 1492. How much years that? I love enough years that. The man make a mistake. And the mistake is repeated over and 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 it's not an over me at all but it's over and over and over the mistake is repeated through the centuries so you know what happened now the lie and the mistake become true the africans them who come here was never exempted from the label of Indian. So we use African automatically because we land over here to become Indian. We are West Indian according to the mistake. Well, we never know so it was a mistake. Because it come 300, 400, 500 years. It follow the, the trail, come right through. And we, we, we they are so now. Most of is not tying us. Most of come from Africa from some slave ship and reach over here. So. And them call we West Indian. And we, we niam it up. And we do ever push your finger in our mouth and vomit it out back. We niam it up and put drink water and make it digest in our way. And we become West Indian, you can go tell most Jamaican. I mean, I can't go tell them because you will tell them most Jamaican in a Jamaica. If you tell them, say, them are African, it's like you tell them, say, them are dirty dog. 
If you tell them, say them are Africa, them say, look here. Me and no Rasta no bring no dirty Rasta foolishness to me. Me and no African, me a Jamaican, me a West Indian, me born in the West Indies. How the hell we reach that? How we reach that? We reach that because some people who have the power manipulate history and write the history from their perspective, from their eyes. And we come now and gulp it down. And if you tell a youth in a Jamaica, say him is not a West Indian, him say, I am teacher, teach him that. Because the teacher them accept that as a truth, as a reality, that we are West Indians. Or we become West Indians. When is Africa? Which part of Africa? Indian, the more than Uganda, and them come there. So, and, and remember, say, we name run out all of the Indian, them out, out, out of Uganda one at a the time. Them name again. So remember him name. But how the hell we become? Indian. How the hell the Native American, the indigenous people of America become Indian? How the Aboriginal people then become Indian? How the Amaridian them in a Guyana become Indian? Who gave us that label that we now can hug it up and say we are West Indians? As a matter of fact, we have a university of the West Indies. Whereas cater for West Indian people. And you come from the West Indies. I wonder if you saw me I say. Me I say that when the reality leak and step in, it become the lie. And the lie because they there and beating away, taught to us, regurgitated. We vomit it sometime and we drink it back the vomit. And it become part of our life, part of our understanding of self, part of our thinking. And we call ourselves West Indian and we don't see nothing wrong with that. No, it not it not change the price of bread. It not change how we walk, it not change how we talk. But guess what? It has something to do with a collective mind and our consciousness. Is directed or we direct our consciousness to ourselves. The confidence we're supposed to have in ourselves get eaten. You know, like when rat a chew thing, pickle, 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 pickle. I saw we thinking get chew, we chew, we little, 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 little. Till the little thing, the first chewing don't seem important. But guess what? Is that serious thing? They have a way of touch of people in a certain Eastern country, you know. Them just put some water over your head, you know, and make it drip. Tip by your forehead. Tip. It's a wicked way to touch our people that. Tip, tip. And that is what them do to me now because we know we wake up. We know we wake up, you know. We still are here the tip in our head and I start love it. Yeah, we start love the tip. Yeah, me a West Indian. Oh. But I come in African. You never born in Africa, but you never born in Indian either. You never born in Africa, but you didn't born. You never born in India. It's India the man did I go and make a wrong about turn. He make a wrong about turn and reach on us, and you now continue now with the wrong about turn with him. And him have you at speed roll like you or your king. Because I remember him say, "Come never know you know." Him say the four corners of the earth, you know. We know that the earth now no four corners. Him never know that. But people say, well, you want to listen to four corners of the earth. I'm going to lick you from you to the, I'm making you reach out the four corners. We part the corner. Show me one of the corners of them. Where the corner of the earth there. And that them do to you know. The peripheral thinking become the thinking. The major thinking. It starts from the periphery, from the edge. But then no, it just, it just, nyam, 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 become you. So we are not ourselves. We are West Indians. We can't be African. We cannot be African because we never come from Africa. And furthermore, even if they come from Africa, we don't want to identify with Africa because of pure murder and death and destruction and Ebola and disease and this and that and 
people are starving and all them something. We don't want, we don't want to identify with that. You know, see it. We want to New York, New York. It's so large, it's called it two times. New York, New York. We bring bright lights and this and that and tear up jeans and fingernail we push down out there. So, terrible. The terrible. We're in a serious position. But you know, same like how the slave mill grinds slow according to my brethren, Damian, it's the same way the consciousness of a mill we are grinding slow to. But guess what? Sure. We confident in that, that the mill are grind, the confidence mill are grind, and it are grind slow. We confident that the race is not for the swift, but it's to endure to the end. And we're going to endure because logic says we're not supposed to be here after 400 years of the bully of cruelty that them put upon we. We were supposed to be there, here, but we're there still. And if we're there still, tomorrow we're going to be here. We're going to be here tomorrow. And we're there still. Because our liberation and our freedom must come as African people. And no matter how it look now, no matter how the thing look away, we say, we're confident in the victory of good over evil. Ayla Slassi said that many, many years ago. we confident in the victory of good over evil. And the reason why you name Mr. White is because you never know. You don't have a name named Ukumba Lomumba. You don't want to call those names neither because you have to kind of name that. You prefer name Mr. Brown and Mr. White. How the hell you name Mr. White are you black? Because we in Africa, when we name ourselves, when our children, when our parents name us, they name it according to your character and your personality. Sometimes they name you on the day you was born. Like when we talk about Kwame and Kruma, you know which day Kwame and Kruma born because Kwame is Saturday. So you said that youth was born on a Saturday. It's, not, it's a scientific approach to things, you know. You name a child a country's personality. You don't look on TV and say Kardashian with a big bottom of cock out so, and she have millions. And you say you're going to name a picnic Kardashian. No, it's not to African people name. That's how European people make we do it. We are saying it's very important that we understand how them get we caught up in a certain talking and certain ways to look on things. For them, logic is not necessarily the logic of the world. It's a logic according to their definition of themselves. We must find the logic that define we as a people, as African people. And it is very important now that we understand how important it is to claim that part away, that Africanness, that part away, because soon, trust me, the way them have said the thing now, it crisscross, it crisscross. That only them can identify themselves. Look more, we can identify ourselves. We still can identify ourselves now. Look on the TV. You ever see the people that we read news on TV? I say, oh, it's what make down them people. Are. What the hell them are used on them face? Why is it that them look so? You tell me say, so much shine upon them face that when them come on TV, them, they, them have to look so. Then oh, when white people they on TV, them look so because them done white already, them fit into the camera. They are weird. Ways to light black people on the camera that these camera people don't know because they never go to school with studies say black people must not look like white people on television. Black people must look like black people and white people must look like white people. And there's ways to do it. But they never study that. African people is African people. It's just simple. Chinese people don't look like white people on TV. I don't matter, them cannot look like white people. Them feels round differently. And if them stand up and you look behind them, you don't see nothing. And them usually short. I go to Africa and I see some pygmy. Them call them, hey, when them, hey, you, you wouldn't believe there are big people them, you know. I not talk about freak of nature, you know. Like some people, you see on TV, you know, we have this. 
them little short people we are going with them and things in America and them come them. We are talking about real people in Africa. As some little man, as some little woman. When you see them, they look like picnic. They look like a whole heap of picnic around the long yard. But them is people, big people. You understand? Not freak of nature. What we have done as a freak of nature. Because black people don't want to see them African. It's a freak. It's a freak if a black person come out in my yard and have him fingernails stretched gone out there so and the ear of hers here and the bottom enough for them own, them breast enough for them own, them thick lips kind of I mean them high brown enough for them own, them eyelash enough for them that is freak of nature. Put panta pie you now them have tear up pants, them have dress out, them have them uh, uh, no clothes on them go and dance a light fire and eat them crutches and do all sorts of things. That is freak of nature. But that is where we're there. We come like this and be like this because there is low self-esteem. And Marcus Giave say, and we're going to repeat it over and over and over and over. If you have no confidence in yourself, you're twice defeated in the race of life. But with confidence, you have won even before you have started. The words of Marcus, Messiah Gavi. We seek if we continue after we know, after we know in our history, say the guy make a mistake. And after we now know and see who is Indian in our Jamaica. And we, the African stock, we come here, so not like all the Indian them come here. Because they never come here. Tie your pan no slave ship. For them, mothers never get pregnant pan slave ship. That because them never want to get the baby pan the slave ship and reach us. So them throw themselves and the baby off of the ship. Them rather go down in the water. I could not say a lie. I could say it's a mistake Columbus make. Columbus make a mistake. And we use the mistake to define ourselves as a people. And this boasted slave them on your so we tell you say it don't matter. That don't make no difference. If you think you can go in a Mr. Maharaji place and call him German or call him Indian, not Indian, sorry, call him Finnish or Swiss. He not going to accept that. He is an Indian. He come from India. His parents come from India. Where we are saying? We are saying African people have to wake up. Wake up. Because the thing start out with a lie. So it must continue with a lie. Because you can't start out with a lie and end up with truth. You can't start out with a lie. And then... At the bottom, because you have to go tell the next lie for redeem the first lie. That is how it go. And tell somebody catch you now something, it's like you have to go find something else. We go justify the next something and justify the next something. The only thing is that when you tell a lie to somebody, most of the time the person don't know says a lie. You know, see it. So two them don't know says a lie. In order to amplify what you did say in the beginning, that him can, him can more believe you more, you tell a next lie. And a next lie and a next lie. But it's still a lie. You keep on, even if him catch you or not, it's still a lie you tell. But him don't know it's a lie. So it's we that, it's we that have stopped the lie where we never know it's a lie. But you know, we get more, we get more conscious of our surroundings. We have books and we can read them English language. We can read about them, about them history and ours. And we fools if we have all of this information in front of us and still refuse to dig into it and believe us after madness. Because belief cannot inspire you to reality. It is information that cause inspiration. And the less inspiration information you have, 
you're going to turn to ridiculous thinking, superstitious thinking. And when you put it down, you came and said that is inspiration. The greatest people, the, the, the people who have inspired people more is people who have information not people who just go wrong and sit down and say yes this might be that and that and believe this and believe that no inspiration come from information and if you don't have the information it can lead you to superstition so most of we gone into some superstitious belief system and create a sort of illusion and when them give you for them reality it become our reality now and we start to amplify the reality with madness because we do have the information we start to now deal with superstition and add superstition upon the belief and superstition upon the more belief and the more belief and then we turn out like damn idiots and we can't get nowhere because we don't recognize that is a lie is a lie them tell me for years we are telling them, them and we are this lie this is the cutting edge